After a nearly three-year wait, Marcus Phoenix and crew are back to cap off what has become one of the most successful new IPs of this console generation. It built its brand with stop-and-pop cover-based gameplay and ferocious violence, but can Gears of War 3 rise to finish the trilogy in style? I'm not the conversational type, but when I get back, I want a nice, long chat. So two years after Gears 2, the Cog Soldiers are surviving at sea, and Dom is growing veggies to match his manly beard. News comes that Marcus's father is still alive, and he has a plan to stop the Lambent infection from overrunning the planet. This prompts the Gears to search for clues to the scientist's location and make the arduous journey to reach him in time. Phoenix, get down to the hangar. The helicopters are under attack. We need to get them airborne right away. Sarah is a more fleshed out and believable world in Gears 3. The pockets of surviving civilians have little respect for the soldiers who destroyed their cities, and you'll come face to face with the tragic consequences of some of the war's most drastic decisions. There are undoubtedly some silly moments, but it's a more thoughtful, relatable story than those from the prior two games. Gears of War 3 is simply a monster of a game. You'll race through a ship as it's ripped apart, fight scores of glowing Lambent enemies, use an armored suit to fight off a Leviathan, and reconnect with the Locust Horde. And that's all just in the first act of the campaign. It goes full throttle, easing up here and there for some aimless wandering. The campaign lasts a solid 10 hours, and while you'll want to experience the story on your own, that's just the start. As in past Gears titles, the entire campaign can be played in co-op split screen with a buddy, and for the first time, you can go in with a team of four online. The new arcade variant awards points as you play, tallying the results at the end of each chapter. This added sense of competition brings a new life to co-op as each player goes for high-value targets and looks for ways to stay ahead. One major annoyance is that character-specific loadouts reset at the beginning of each chapter, forcing you to repeatedly scrounge for new guns and ammo if you don't like what you're given. Competitive multiplayer sticks to groups of 8 to 10 across a diverse set of 10 maps, including a mine with sandstorms rolling in, a tropical beach, a grocery store, and a thrash ball stadium. There's six modes in all, and whether you're playing a simple round of team deathmatch, sticking with a partner and wingman, or taking another player hostage and capture the leader, Gears 3 rewards simple combat mastery and avoids things like kill streaks, perks, and custom loadouts. Instead, each player chooses from a limited set of starter guns, with more coveted weapons like scorchers and gorgon pistols placed around the maps. Of course, this design choice also facilitates foot races to the most powerful armaments on each map. Your mileage will vary depending on taste. Horde mode returns, challenging groups of five to survive through 50 waves of enemies. Every tenth wave is now a boss round, pitting you against deadly creatures like Brumax and Berserkers, which can be a harrowing task. Defense and currency play a stronger role as well. Kills net you cash, which can be used to build spike strips, turrets, and decoys. As you invest in specific types of defenses, you'll be able to build stronger versions and unlock more goodies to keep you in the fight. Despite your best laid plans though, enemies can quickly catch you off guard, ensuring horde mode is still one of the most intense experiences Gears has to offer. The newest part of the Gears package is Beast Mode. Essentially the inverse of Horde, players get to control a variety of locust creatures, trying to break through human defenses and kill them all before time runs out. Tiers of new creatures unlock as you proceed, and it's important for teams to maintain a diverse group. While tickers can tear down spike strips and fences without attracting much attention, maulers and boomers move slowly but dish out big damage, while corpsers and serapedes have strong defenses that allow them to get in close to inflict the pain. With only a dozen rounds, completing beast mode is less of a daunting task than Horde, but the appeal of mastering each creature's strengths will keep players coming back for more. In the midst of all this is a robust system tracking stats as players find collectibles, earn ribbons and medals, and level up, unlocking new characters, executions, and hard-to-earn mutators for things like big heads and a laugh track. There's no doubt that Gears of War 3 gives you plenty of ways to play and plenty of reasons to keep playing. <laughs> The 
There aren't many games that play quite like Gears of War, and it can take a little time to adjust to the distinctly weighty feel of its characters, the barreling freight train sprints, and the contextual cover system. However, once you've gotten your sea legs, so to speak, the system feels natural and refined, allowing you to move around cover and roll out of the way without it feeling sticky or cumbersome. Staying in cover also increases your accuracy, and the active reload system returns to provide a satisfying rhythm to combat and temporary damage boosts. Gears of War 3 doesn't have the flashiest guns, but there are some great additions. The Retro Lancer is an effective primary weapon, but has a huge kickback, so you have to fire in short bursts. It's also tipped with the bayonet, allowing you to charge into enemies. The Digger shoots burrowing explosives that pop up near their victims, and the Cleaver is simply a giant butcher knife that splits enemies in half. Of course, there's also a custom execution for each weapon, giving you incentive to experiment with all the gruesome possibilities. In addition to a wide range of gun-toting locusts and lambents, the creatures out to kill you include swarming crab-like polyps, gunkers that toss explosive balls of goo, and burrowing corpsers. Boss battles put your reflexes to the test, and the campaign keeps players focused on moving forward. Yet it continually introduces incredible new set pieces, with some of the most impressive moments happening at the helm of a turret. In multiplayer, the emphasis on cover doesn't quite translate the same. Staying put can end with someone kicking you and blasting you with a shotgun. Teamwork is emphasized even in deathmatch, as rounds are determined by the number of respawns, so reviving a teammate carries a lot more weight. The sense of camaraderie is carried throughout almost every mode, providing Gears of War 3 with its own unique feel. Gears of War has always been a feast for the eyes, and while this war-torn planet still has its share of browns and grays, there's a fair bit of greenery in the third installment, as well as a cool dip under the waves. Gorgeous vistas provide impressive views of Sarah's larger creatures and wide landscapes, sunbeams filter through swirling smoke and debris, and the lambent explode in an impressive fountain of glowing yellow goo. Unfortunately, Gears of War 3 also shows that not even Epic can surmount the Unreal Engine's limitations, as textures still load slowly at times, and some of the bigger scenes cut to pre-rendered video. The score is in line with previous titles sounding militant yet somber, evoking a mood of heroism touched by tragedy. Years of War 3 is a fantastic experience that's sure to make new fans with innovative new multiplayer options that give players plenty of room to experiment and find their niche. There are moments in every act of the campaign that would serve as grand finales in most other games, and it's done so well that it'll make you want to play through the whole series all over again.